Hi everyone. I wanted to go over how to use Rhino 7, um, which is the work in progress uh, copy that is um, currently being developed for Rhino. So you'll see the interface is a little bit different. It's, it's really merging um, the PC and the Mac interface. And I wanted to talk about a new feature uh, called uh, gradient fill. Um, and we can use this with in conjunction with hatches. And we've talked a little bit about hatches in a previous video. And so I just want to kind of talk about uh, if you were to go ahead and purchase Rhino, you could then have access to Rhino 7 uh, and uh, use this kind of um, new feature if you wanted to with your personal logo. So uh, some of you in graphic design, I think, may find this really useful. Um, so just wanted to kind of talk about how to go about that. Now I've got just two basic curves. You know, we've got a triangle and a circle. Uh, just very quickly, I'm going to um, array this triangle along curve. So we'll click on that. We'll click on the object and we'll do 15 of these. And we wind up with something that looks like this. And then I should be able to select everything and trim out. I want to just want to get rid of uh, all of this. So clean that up. All right, and now uh, I'll just join these. So now there it's, it's one continuous shape. All right, so the command is hatch, just like we've done in Rhino 6. Um, and you select the curves you want to hatch, you hit enter, and we're going to get a pop-up menu. Now this is very similar to the pop-up menu that you get in Rhino 6, except this time you'll notice that there are options for a gradient fill. So if we click on this gradient fill, gradient fill will, will get a uh, option for linear. We can change this from linear to um, radial. So radial method uh, would kind of change that. Uh, orientation in which the gradient works and you'll see you get the slider bar that um, moves in and out so you can change that gradient and uh, again if you do linear it's going to go from one side to the other and you can change the location of that uh, line if you'd like to be able to um, uh, use the linear method um, and so you've got all sorts of options to be able to um, work with. Let's go ahead and just do radial here. And we'll change that so that kind of radiates it to, to follow our pattern. And um, you'll see you can edit and it'll give you a whole uh, list of things here to be able to edit. And so we can change the way that works just by using that little slider. Um, and so again, um, you may want to play around with this and I'm just going to accept this and apply it. So at any point, if we wanted to change the color of that um, gradient, we could do that by clicking on the hatch and that will bring us, bring us back to the uh, object properties window and we can hit edit and you'll see that you get this edit color. And then it'll say select the color stop to edit the color. So we can select here and then uh, we can choose from our eyedropper, you know, color that we want and then hit apply and it will change that color. We can hit enter to end that. And you'll notice that you've, you've got the base um, hatch right by itself and then you've got the curve work that made it. So. Some of you might find this useful in, in creating a color gradient uh, for a graphic or an image. And so I just thought that I would share this uh, quick video with you to show you some features in uh, Rhino 7. And uh, so if you've got any questions about this, just let me know. Thanks.